good afternoon everyone the topic that was given to me or rather maybe which i chose for this afternoon is the third eye the inner awareness of an actor what is the third eye literally speaking it's the invisible eye on the forehead indian mythology often refers to shiva's third eye the third eye is synonymous with what we call the mind's eye or the inner eye it's considered to be the highest the most important form of sense it provides perception beyond ordinary sight and maybe if you google it there's one line that struck me it helps you to think clearly see clearly not look see clearly and helps you to solve mental blockages if at all so for an actor like me why is this third eye important and what is this inner awareness of an actor broadly speaking let me break it up into three intellectual awareness physical awareness and emotional awareness this is a technical breakdown because in reality they kind of merge overlap and converge but for the sake of explanation intellectual awareness is something which is a preparation of an actor beforehand before he performs on stage or before the camera starts rolling so for example the characterization an actor works on his character what kind of person is he his background where does he come from his relationship or his correlation with the other characters in that scene or in that moment sometimes he may acquire another skill an actor may have to learn how to play the piano for that particular character or he may have to learn how to drive a truck so that skill is something that is pre learned or learned before he performs or she performs an actor has to know his lines his dialogue before he comes onto the set or before he starts performing often the lines and the dialogue of his co-actor he may have to work on a certain language which is not his own language to be able to play that character he may have to work on an accent or a dialect so all these are intellectual awarenesses of an actor which he has to know beforehand before he performs let's go to the physical awareness let me break down that physical awareness into two one is dealing with the physical form or the body so before that actor performs or comes on stage or before the camera starts rolling he has to be aware of the, an external factor so does he come rushing in does he come walking in crawling in creeping in if it's cold outside he has to be aware of that cold it's raining outside does he come in dripping is he wet has he run for 10 miles is he sweating perspiring what is it or what external factor affects his physical being when he starts performing so if he's shot by a bullet and there's a wound so will he limp his head is hurting what is that physical reaction to the head hurting or a pain in the neck or a stomach cramp then again the physical awareness related to what an actor may be wearing whether it is a dupatta or a chunni for that woman she has to be aware of how to use it does that actor remove his or her shoes the moment they step on stage or the moment they enter that room the physical property related to that actor whether it's a pair of spectacles or a pen or a or a handkerchief or if he's got an umbrella in his hand that has to be put somewhere when that actor walks into that moment so being aware with the physical form then being aware of the physical space of that actor so when he starts performing he must know that physical space how big or how small that space is for him or her to use as an actor 
what is there in that space is there a table a chair can he use a chair does he kneel does he lie down if he's sick he's going to be only on that bed can he reach out from that bed to the side table is there a fridge there is the physical properties around for him to use as a glass of water is he searching for a gun does he know that the gun is in the second drawer or is he going to go searching for all the drawers but he has to be aware of it that finally it's in drawer number 3 so the physical property physical markings that the actor has to be aware of on a technical level he has to know that there are marks there for him to stand or kneel at a particular spot to be able to take the light so that the audience or that camera can see his face a marking may be fixed in relation to a co-actor where the two actors meet otherwise we will not see that they met at least on camera that marking which is physical may be there for dramatic effect the director may say i want you to come and stand here and give this speech from here because i'm going to have this thermocol shower on you so that mark for that actor then physically that mark becomes important the physical awareness of sound so if you're on stage you know there's a sound effect coming or there's a shout or a scream from afar awareness of that sound outside if there's a music cue that is going to play or an actor may be told that you need to keep quiet i need that silence for 10 seconds because there's music that's going to come there or the music is going to play and the actor has to speak over it means then he has to be louder to be able to be heard over that level of music at least on stage so awareness of the music of sound of silence the physical awareness on stage what we call as a fourth wall you the audience that's a fourth wall so the actor may be looking at you but he is not meant to see you because this this fourth wall is the window he is actually looking at the garden or the trees outside he needs to be aware of that for the visual medium he needs to be aware aware of the camera he has to be physically aware of the camera without make it seeming to us that he is aware that position of the camera is important because in relation to that the focus marks are there for the focus puller to make sure that we see that actor in focus physical awareness of all this the physical awareness these levels of physical awareness and these levels of intellectual awareness then converge into what i may term for the sake of explanation is emotional awareness what is the mood of that actor how does he react what is his state of mind and using these various awareness levels of physical awareness and intellectual awareness he or she stimulates his emotional responses which act as a catalyst for that actor's instinct or gut and that in turn helps to open the window of that third eye let me give you an example to explain this whole thing in a nutshell let's say this actor has to walk into a room it's dark it's winter it's very cold and he has just been told that he's got this promotion which he's been waiting for months and months so he runs into the room throws his cap his muffler his coat there's a file and folder in his hand and in his blissful state of mind he throws the file all the papers scatter but these papers are important because they deal with his promotion so he has to gather them up so he has to go to the left where the table is there there's a lamp there he has to put that lamp on find all those papers then he has to take it back to that table where the lamp is at a mark where the light catches his face so i can see him smiling happily there he opens that folder kisses those papers and suddenly his phone rings we don't know something has been said to him on the phone his expression changes smile drops 
He takes that folder, goes to the edge of the bed and sits in such a position which has been told to him so that he can be seen by the audience or if it's a camera then in a particular angle. Tilts his face in a certain angle that the camera can see his eyes. He holds that moment for five seconds as per the instruction of the director. He looks at that folder again, those pages, slowly removes those pages, tears them into bits. But he has to be careful where he throws those pieces of paper because they have to be seen by the audience or caught on camera. He stands up, screams, yells out the line that he heard the interviewer speak in a particular dialect, picks up his coat, knocks the lamp off, darkness, and slowly walks out. All this in two minutes. So what is that actor doing? For himself, he has created or made himself aware at so many levels. Intellectually, based on what his character is, considering it's winter, it's cold and all that, which I mentioned. He has to understand the physical space and those marks there. Where that corner of the bed is, how his face has to be tilted. He has to be aware of that file and those papers. He has to be aware of that lamp and that light. He has to know when he has to stand up after he has torn those sheets into shreds. He has to know the dialect of that interviewer when he screams that line out. So he is operating on so many various levels of concentration. His energies are so focused to allow himself to see clearly by opening that third eye, to be able to reach out to you as an audience or to that camera. Now for you as an audience or for any viewer, you or the naked eye will not be able to tell these levels of awareness. Yes, you will see the, the physicality. Ah, this actor, he's, he's limping, he's been hurt. The actor is not hurt, but the character is. So that is discernible. But the other levels of awareness, whether it's the preparation of an actor or all that the actor has to keep in mind in order to convey to you as a viewer to make that scene or that moment work is not something discernible. That is that concentration or those energies focused or that attempt to open the mind's eye which the actor has to be aware of. And it's not that it's just applicable to an actor. It's applicable to anyone, anywhere. For an actor, you may see a scene and say, ha, ah, you know something, it didn't work. But what happened? Was the concentration powers of the actor kind of not working? Was there not a synergy of those awareness levels? But sometimes you may find that, oh wow, that was magic. Something happened in that scene. So what is that wow factor, that magic? In most cases, it's the awareness level of that actor when he has performed that scene or that moment at that time that has created that magic. And more often than not, that actor has been able to, for himself or herself, open the window of that third eye through his mind from within. We often associate that third eye with mystery, mysticism and magic, but it's actually an inner awareness of sorts. That's what it is. In generic terms, we refer to it as looking at the world differently. For an actor, it's looking at that space differently to be able to communicate to an audience, to the viewer or to the camera. 
it doesn't happen like this. Everything requires practice. You may attempt a few layers for an actor, I'm speaking. But it takes time. You, you, you develop, you look within, you create these levels of awareness for yourself as an actor. And the more levels you create, the sharper your senses, the more acute your instinct to be able to convey what you want to as an actor. Many refer to it as enlightenment beyond the physical eye. Yes, it is. It is a kind of an inner glow. For me as an actor, we, we yearn to, to try to achieve those, those highs, as many as we can of those various levels of awareness, if I may say so. And that's why I'm using the term inner awareness of an actor but it's applicable to anyone anyway to be able to look within this third eye is therefore called the most important form of sense synonymous with your sixth sense so there it is still the most heightened form of sense. I hope I have been able to make some sense. Thank you. <laughs>